This is The Locker Room on News 3. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's edition of The Locker Room. As high school football winds down, the basketball season tipping off. Some players on the Lansdowne boys know that state title-winning feeling as the Eagles raising that trophy back in 2019. Tonight, a beach matchup with Salem in game number two. Pick it up first quarter. Ethan Ward on cleanup duty here picks up the board, back up and in, plus the foul. Eagles out to an early five-point lead. Sun Devils right there in transition. Joshua Steven going hard to the hole. Hoop and the harm. We'd be tied after the opening frame. Second quarter now. Check out Nair Valentine right there to catch the air ball. Then gets the circus shot to fall and one. This one goes to overtime with Lansdown holding on for the 77-66 win. Packed house at Nansman River where the Warriors hosting Kings Fork. Home team's crowd is loud early on as the Warriors go ahead, but the Bulldogs quickly take that lead away. In large part, thanks to George Beal, who is a three-point machine tonight. Kings Fork leads by 40 in the final seconds of the first half. Beal keeps showing off. His three-pointer as time expires gives the Bulldogs that 56-13 lead. Kings Fork goes on to win 85-41. Nansman River girls also hosting Kings Fork tonight. And like that first game, it's the Bulldogs in command the entire way through. With 30 seconds to go, Kings Fork is looking to break 90. There gets the layup to go. She is all fired up because the Bulldogs win this one in convincing fashion. Final score of 91 to 16. Big win for the Bulldogs on the boys and girls side. Still ahead, five area football teams look for spots in state title games. We'll break down tomorrow's semifinal action coming up right after this. Well, an action-packed Saturday awaits as high school football state semifinals kick off, Megan. That's right. We got five area teams who are just two wins away from state gold, and those five teams have just four combined losses between them. Let's start in Class 6, where Oscar Smith continues its quest for back-to-back -back state crowns. The Tigers only set back this year, coming to nationally ranked St. John Bosco out of California. Tomorrow afternoon, Oscar Smith takes aim at Battlefield from up in Northern Virginia. Smith has outscored opponents in the playoffs 185 to 13 in three games so far. Oh, meanwhile, Green Run football is having its best season ever at 13-0. The Stallions tasting the state semifinals for the first time. Now standing in their way, a Maury team looking for its second state title in the last three seasons, giving us a treat of a matchup tomorrow. While most high school football fields have gone silent for the offseason, <laughs> Morian Green run alive and well with the sights and sounds of playoff football. When we start in uh, late January, February, it's always all the way until uh, to mid-December. That's always been our goal. That's always been our plan. We set out to do this journey way before the pandemic started. So we, we definitely had our eyes on this on this on this point. And we're glad we're here and we look we look forward to you know, keep going. The Commodores and Stallions, two of just five 757 teams still standing, and they'll square off in the Class 5 state semifinals on Saturday. Maury, no stranger to this stage, but Green Run, it's here for the first time ever. It means everything. There's a lot of teams that's home right now and don't get a chance to play, don't get a chance to practice, so you just got to take advantage of it and work as hard as you can and prepare for the game. I think we only graduated maybe six seniors um, in the spring, so a lot of these guys that played in that state semi last year, they're back, um, they're ready to go. Um, one other shot at the title. It's not very often that programs from right down the road meet each other at this stage of the game. So this battle, not just about getting a shot at a state championship, but grabbing Hampton Roads gridiron supremacy as well. It's a lot of animosity, it's been a lot of talking. We just gonna try to shut them up, it's that simple. Is it big for the area? Um, looking forward to a, a packed house on Saturday. The kids, this kid, both both kids deserve it on both teams. Um, so we're looking forward to having a good show on Saturday. We're always looking for the matchup. We are, we're always looking ready for the challenge. I'm pretty sure that they are too. Um, but hey, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. One team moves on, the other goes home for the winner. A heavyweight fight at Green Run on Saturday. Play for a state championship will mean a lot for a lot of us because only a couple guys on this team were on the 19 team that won a state championship. So we all want to get our own one. I love that this senior class, we've been through a lot together. Um, we, they started their career 1-9 and nine, and now here we are playing for the state semifinals. So I couldn't ask for more. 
To class four, where Kings four hits the road. Up in the Richmond area to face Verina tomorrow in the Bulldogs semifinal matchup. Their only setback coming at the hands of Oscar Smith in a Southeastern District matchup earlier this season. This marks the first state semifinal appearance for Kings Fork as they prepare to face a Blue Devil squad that is also 11-1 and in the state semis just two years ago. Now we come back to the 757 for the Class 3 semifinal. Phoebus hosting Brentsville District at Darling Stadium. The Phantoms are the only team of the two to have state semifinal experience and plenty of it. Phoebus is in its third state semifinal since 2015 and before moving to Class 3, won seven state titles over the past 20 seasons. Now with plenty of postseason experience, Phoebus knows that there's no room for mistakes this late in the game. It's a semifinal, so Things get really tight this late in the playoffs, and you know the guys got to really be focused in on what we're what the ultimate end game goal is, and you know we're excited to be in this situation. We focus back on the next work, task. That's working. a state championship. Work, it's a ring. We back to work. Right, right, right. Whoever we got next, just know they on the clock, and we're gonna be ready when it comes Saturday. The Phoebus players with plenty of confidence ahead of tomorrow's game. All of our area teams' state semifinal matchups will be getting underway at 2 p.m. Still ahead, an overtime thriller puts Christopher Newport women's soccer one win away from a national title. All the history behind this afternoon's Golden Goal. Goal is coming up right after this. The dream season is continuing for Christopher Newport women's soccer after a dramatic win this afternoon in the Division Three Final Four. The captains facing Loris College in the first national semifinal in Greensboro. We be scoreless and head to overtime, and that is where Riley Cook takes over. She finds the back of the net about two and a half minutes into the extra session, punching CNU's ticket to the national title match. Cook scores her 34th career game-winning goal, which makes her the all-time leader in game winners in all divisions, both men and women. That's, that's a pretty big deal. The captains, they're in the national championship game for the first time ever and will face top-seeded College of New Jersey tomorrow at 2.30. Or to the college basketball ranks where Norfolk State is enjoying one of its best starts in school history. Spartans winning nine of their first ten games. The best start since 95-96. Tomorrow, NSU traveling across the water to face rival Hampton. The second time in six days these two teams will square off. Pirates and Spartans meeting this past Sunday in Phoenix in Chris Paul's HBCU Challenge. A nine-point win for the green and gold. They'll have to keep it up in hostile territory. Norfolk State's last home game, November 23rd, and they will not be back at Eccles Hall until January 10th. For head coach Robert Jones, though, so far, so good. I didn't buy in for the most part. I think that you just can't get overconfident because the more and more wins that you get, uh, it's a bigger bullseye on you, just like I'm sure Hampton tomorrow is going to give us everything they got. So um, we got to understand that, be able to handle that a little better. Tomorrow's tip time set for 5.30 at Hampton right after the Spartan and Pirate women wrap up and that is a wrap on tonight's edition of the locker room if you joined us late you'll be able to catch the entire program on the sports page of wtkr